Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and in this video I want to talk to you a little bit about the anxious preoccupied attachment style individual and how they can show up in a friendship. So in this video we'll cover like different potential um, positives, potential pitfalls or challenges this individual might face um, and we'll really talk about some different strategies in a second part of this series if this is what you guys are interested in but I'm going to give you like the full overview and synopsis in this video because just in and of itself it'll probably be a little bit lengthy because there's a lot to say and share. So before I dive in, we are still doing our sale to support our community during anything related to quarantine or isolation or just anything where you're not feeling alone. Um, so we have an amazing community inside of the school. We have um, four live calls a week. We have all of our previous recorded webinars. We have 35 professionally recorded and edited um, courses. And um, we're constantly adding new content. Our courses for this month are about nervous system regulation, and basically somatic processing, um, really connected to personal, um, personal post-traumatic growth, um, and really being able to go into old memories or pain points and, and really shift the, the body sensations and emotional memories connected at a subconscious level to old experiences that might still be impacting our present. Um, and it's such an important course to, to dive into and to go through. Um, and I won't list all the other upcoming courses. We've got a whole bunch of exciting ones for fall. You can check them out on our website. Um, and then the other thing I'll say too, is if you are ever in need, we are also offering scholarships our school. So you can reach out to info at personaldevelopmentschool.com for any scholarship options. Um, we're definitely really trying to work with people during um, sort of going back into fall and it looks like there's a second wave already here of COVID and um, I just know the impact that that has. So we're trying to do a lot of that and we're also going to try to be adding like, you know, an every so often, maybe month or, or six weeks um, social event just for people to jump on Zoom and chat and just have like a community space for people as well. So Hopefully that like supports our community. Um, and also please like and subscribe to this channel because especially going into the fall as well, I'm gonna make it uh, an intention if you hit the notification button to just do like a live webinar every so often for the YouTube channel, um, just where people can ask questions and just during times where it might be kind of funny and things are closed down and all that stuff. Anyways, I will focus on this video for a second. Okay, so let's talk about how the anxious preoccupied individual shows up as a friend. So first and foremost, these people are generally like very likable when you first meet them. They're usually warm and open and interested and present and can be quite charming and charismatic and quite adept socially at like getting to know people and connecting and bonding because this is part of like this person's structure at the personality level. Usually they've learned um, out of what felt like survival to them to really connect with other individuals. This isn't always the case. There can be some very introverted, anxious, preoccupied individuals. Um, but as a general rule, one thing that I will say is once there is a bit of connection, anxious, preoccupied individuals tend to really thrive on like building out those connections and relationships. So what you'll often see is that anxious, preoccupied people are warm, um, they're likable, um, they're very caring, they're very attentive, they're very focused and present, um, and usually very charismatic and adept. And they usually want to know you. They want to make people feel comfortable and safe and they want to build closeness and they, they tend to always seek some of that like emotional hunger and more connection in their relationships. Now, the one place that anxious preoccupied individuals can, can really struggle is I find that there's definitely a pattern where anxious preoccupied individuals can spend so much time like rehearsing and rehashing, not so much rehearsing, but that too sometimes, but rehashing is the word I'm specifically looking for. Um, rehashing like their interactions, like going back through, like let's say an anxious preoccupied individual leaves a social event. They might go back through and be like, when I talked to this person, what did they think? Did I make them feel okay? Did they think something bad about me? When I talked to that person, what did they feel towards me? And oh my gosh, why did I say that one thing? I should have said this thing instead. And sometimes they'll go back through and comb, like with a fine tooth comb, go back through and like literally rehearse all the experiences, what they should have done and could have done. And it can put a lot of unnecessary stress on this individual. And it can also create, even though this person seems very well adjusted socially a lot of the time, it can create like social anxiety at the same time. And it may not be so much going into an event, but definitely post. It's like, it's like, like post social anxiety. Um, because there's a lot of anxiety involved with them. Like thinking that they should have been better and done enough and done more. And, and yes, there can be a little bit of social anxiety leading up 
or like during, but most of it is going to be in actually replaying. Okay. So I would say this is a strong pattern and probably about 25% of anxious preoccupied individuals, especially if they're really anxious. I also noticed that as individuals get older who are anxious preoccupied, it tends to sort of die down a little bit. Um, and I think part of this is correlated with them finding, with individuals finding more of their sense of self. And I would absolutely say that there is a correlation between this pattern of behavior, like rehashing, I could make a whole video on this, rehashing their interactions and a lack of self-identity. And so if we are deriving our sense of self through how well we show up or perform in social interactions, then of course we're going to be hyper-focused and hyper-vigilant around them and be studying them and, and worrying about them because it's part of who we are and how we're seeing ourselves versus the more you start to find yourself, learn yourself, know your needs, feel good about your boundaries, clear about who you are and what you want to create in each of the seven areas of your life, the more you have that strong self-identity, the more you'll naturally, um, it'll be like an inverse relationship with how much you're studying your social interactions and potentially being a little bit obsessive around them. Why? Because you're not driving so much of your sense of self and feelings of survival. Like I am okay and alive as a person through external coming internal, but more rooted in internal and then going external, which just makes that need to study and worry so much die off. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. I could make a full separate video about that. Um, now, other core wounds or like potential challenges you'll see is um, anxious, preoccupied friends will feel afraid of abandonment in their friendships. They will feel really easily wounded by exclusion and like feeling not included in social or group interactions. They'll feel very sensitive to being disliked or not belonging or not being approved of. And usually they'll make it mean that they weren't good enough in some way and that they're failing. And these are really important things to be aware of because a lot of these are just stories. And it's so normal for every single person to experience some form of exclusion on a, on a, you know, regular basis in social interactions, or at least like, at least multiple times in life, right? Not everybody's going to feel like they are the, you know, they fully fit in completely everywhere at every social interaction or event or workplace or friendship dynamic. Like not everybody's always going to feel completely, completely included because people are going to have differences and similarities and some people are going to get along more than others at different times. And so if we think about, you know, somebody who might be dismissive avoidant or fearful avoidant or even secure, navigating those, it's like they usually don't personalize that, but the anxious preoccupied because they're deriving so much of their identity through their friendships and social relationships, this can be very painful for them, like almost excruciating. And so that calls for a lot of reprogramming work in that specific area. And our, uh, our attachment style courses go through a lot of the reprogramming around these core wounds specifically. They're very important to note. Um, and, um, and anxious preoccupied individuals as well, they tend to be very sensitive, like hypervigilant around their friendships, changes in patterns, not calling back, um, getting off the phone too early, leaving your housewarming party early, things like this, like anything where there's a shift in a pattern or somebody doesn't meet an expectation. A lot of times the anxious preoccupied individual personalizes this and makes this mean that they're not loved enough or liked enough or cared for enough as a friend, or they're not doing a good enough job as a friend. And so, you know, they must be doing something wrong. A lot of anxious preoccupied individuals as well, when they see shifts in patterns, they make it mean that they did something wrong. Somebody's mad at them. This is a huge piece for anxious, preoccupied individuals as well, fearing that all the time. And then, and then sometimes they won't feel comfortable just asking. Sometimes they will, um, but sometimes they won't feel comfortable just asking. And then instead they'll like fester and then they'll act in a way that isn't like the true reflection of themselves in a friendship. They might be like a little bit, um, afraid or a little bit anxious and some of those patterns will come up and they can become clingy or want like more closeness to try to reinforce that the person's not mad at them or to try to alleviate some of that social anxiety to a certain degree that they're experiencing. So there's so much more I can say. Um, I definitely, as I'm like re recording this video, thinking like, wow, I should do a follow-up on like how to reprogram some of these things and, sh and shift them and change them. Um, I can put that in a separate video. I just don't want to make all these videos like super, super long because I know YouTube watch time for everybody is like generally not extremely long. So um, let me know if there's anything else you want to see about this topic, um, about what to do. Jeez, I'm like, as I'm recording this, I'm like, there's so much I could say. I should make a whole course about just this, but keep me posted. Let me know what you think, what you want to see more of, um, and I will create content accordingly. Thank you so much for being here and for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting lots of value out of this channel. Thank you so much.